All right, so I've done some testing during stream for Mast, and also I did some more testing off stream. It was a long stream, and it was also launch day of a new gacha game, Snow Break, so I barely had any rest or sleep. In any case, I'll be talking about Mast here for another skill breakdown, analysis, other unit suggestions, discussions, should you pull for her, and what have you. So let's get right into it. So first, let's talk about Mass Skill 1. This is where half of her identity revolves around. The answer what people's questions are, can the enemy defense go to negative? The answer is no. The lowest is zero, so this means that against enemies with low defense, the defense down barely does anything. This effect will have more effect against higher level bosses though. As a reminder, the reason why this is the case is because the skill is based on mass defense and not the enemy, so it is possible for us to reduce the enemy's defense down to zero. That being said though, skill defense buffs don't have any effect, so units like Ludmilla where she buffs allies defense doesn't actually make mass's own defense down stronger. And another crucial information is the overload defense percent line does not affect mass defense down so it's only based off her base stats <sighs> so i wasted eight rocks trying to get the defense on my mast only to not get it after spending also in the cash shop i also had to reroll out of good lines too but hey you know what guys, if you want to support me, hey, go ahead and click that subscribe button and like the video. Keeps me motivated on things, rip, and comments. Anyways, I also stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash kaijlv. And if you want more content on Nikkei, JRPGs, MMORPGs, just chatting about them, go follow the channel. I, there are a lot of you. Last night when I was testing Mast, there were like over more than a hundred of you. So if this was actually kind of fun. Hey, but hey, you know what? Uh, just a side note. But yeah, I learned this after I tried to scrounge up all my resources. I got and it didn't work on my main. I went to my alt and somehow rolled defense percent on the first try. <laughs> oh... Anyways, this doesn't mean that overload is completely useless though. It just means that you want to just overload her gloves and boots as a, uh, for the base defense that they give. But this also alleviates our necessity to roll for defense percentage. So you just now have to roll crit rate, attack, elemental damage, max ammo. Although max ammo isn't as important and the reason I want to say that is because it's all about keeping up the stacks throughout the entire fight. So even if you have max ammo, chances are the reason why you lose your stacks are during reloading or like during boss mechanics and then not critting the second you have an opportunity to continue attacking again. So what I'd actually put a high priority on in terms of overload is actually critical rate in order to avoid stacks. Not to mention, this critical rate is also very beneficial because it synergizes really well because of her skills. On her skill 1 and burst, they do increase critical damage. Skill 2, it's pretty inconsequential. It jumpstarts her stacking capabilities and bursts your first two full burst early damage DPS over time just because over the higher crit rate for 30 seconds. At level 1, without any other crit buffs, it takes about roughly 20 to 25 seconds to get max stacks, which means that around the second burst, it is when it's actually, you'll see the full effect. Personally, I would recommend just keeping it at level 4 to save your resources. I could see solo raid competitive people leveling this up higher, but even then, I'd say it's a very low priority. Now, burst skill. This is where some people get confused on how she works. In particular, I'm sure many of you are wondering what they meant by mirrors the stack count. The definition talks about how the effect will double the stack count of the designated buff. We've done some testing and all the calculations and stuff to save you all the hassle. We did come out with different scenarios like what it would mean, like does it speed up getting stacks or does it double the defense down or whatever. But in actual conclusion on how the burst 
works is it takes how much stacks you had at the moment you casted your burst and it multiplies that with the final attack percentage multiplier so in this case in if you have level one then you have a 2.67% attack multiplier. If you did your burst at 10 stacks, then you'll have 26.7% attack burst. And then it'll take 7 times at 26.7% attack. Now keep in mind that if you keep shooting, you'll notice that the damage will slightly increase. That's due to the defense of the enemy constantly updating based on stacks. However, it's not going to change the multiplier it had. So it'll constantly be calculating it at 26.7% attack. Additionally, the good thing about this is say you have 50 stacks. If for some reason you drop your stacks, the burst attack will still tick and you may get some damage loss due to the defense down being removed since you lost your stacks. But the good thing about it is it's still ticking the, with the high attack multiplier you had from when you had 50 stacks. As a side note in this, you'll notice that the first number is slightly lower compared to other six. It's because the first number is triggered before the full burst while the second to seventh numbers are triggered during full burst. At max level, we're looking at 4.52 times 50 which is equal to 226% attack multiplier and then you multiply that by 7 which is about 1582% attack over the course of 7 seconds. This does make it sound like she's a great DPS. With how her kit works she's actually set up to be a potential good critical DPS but I don't think we'd be at the level of Dorothy for example where she's dealing about two-thirds of what Alice is normally doing. But if we build a crit electric dream, I think there is a potential for Mass being a DPS contributor. Now let's talk about some units and some questions about them. We've done some calculations on stream and in terms of overall damage and all the utilities considered, she's still below priority compared to blank and novel. In addition to that, what restricts her is her buffs are crit rate reliant, so she's basically tied to volume at this point. And the main advantage of using Mast is she's enabling Scarlet and Guillotine, which are units that are relying of having low HP. The issue is there aren't a lot of units that are like that right now, so Mass is basically created with Scarlet and Guillotine in mind. That's also why likely they made her Electro as well. And it makes you wonder what about in the future are they going to keep this trend where more units that are relying on low hp are gonna be on electro regarding some questions about using her for snow white one shot comp because they missed out on christmas and i'd say don't if that's the only reason you're getting her right now my one shot comp actually use blank instead and instead of christmas and blank is a better alternative than christmas and if you don't have either then actually you know there's poly as substitute all in all i personally just wouldn't suggest getting her for snow white if you plan on using her with scarlet and guillotine sure overall i think mass is more built as a team three or four or five in union or solo raid right now the team one and team two are dominated by novel and blank with Neuer uh, for Burst 2. So if you're thinking just getting specifically for Union Raid, personally, I wouldn't suggest her just because there's plenty of fairly decent alternatives where you're not gonna lose out too much, but also you're not risking like getting too much of a niche unit, like gu Guilty, Diesel, Rupee, Dala, so for your Burst 2. However, if you really want to build that sick electro crit team comp with volume, scarlet, and guillotine, then actually mass is a pretty good choice. For people I'd say that are also competitive in solo raid, I actually think that mass will open up more team around. So she's a heavy consideration to pull as well if you're going to be competitive in that. But yeah, all in all, oh man, I'm still so sad about my <laughs> rocks usage on uh my main but it is what it is it she did end up turning out to have a critical line for each of my pieces uh, uh three pieces i overload three pieces on her so it's actually not a bad <laughs> trade-off but it did take eight rocks 
Anyways, if you guys end up enjoying, found this useful, go ahead and feel free to subscribe and go ahead and also follow my Twitch. I am pretty much live there almost every single day at around 9 p.m. Pacific. But I sometimes go in earlier, sometimes go in later, but uh, that's the general uh, around the vicinity of time. And if I end up not being online, I do note it in my Discord, so feel free to just come hang out in the Discord as well. We have a lot of people, and it is actually kind of booming right now on Discord. There's a lot of people that are coming that are new, and so if you guys have questions, you can like ask me. You can DM me as well uh, if you're not sure. Ping me in the Discord. I usually am active in those. I try to respond if people have questions to me directly. And if you want, you can also just chat with me at Twitch, twitch.tv slash skyjlv. We do some account reviews as well. So for people that are want to uh, get some advice on how to build what next to build and all these other things you guys can come hang out at twitch and i'll be yeah we'll be just waiting and chilling there anyways i'll be playing more gacha games i need to do my other dailies i'll see you guys next time